Yo, welcome back, everybody. JBM418 here, bringing you guys another interview today. Today, I have a special guest with me, Kevin Michael Thomas Dieppa, the radio voice of the Western Illinois Leathernecks. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kevin. No problem. You know what, Jordan? I even brought my uh, my press pass to the show. So, uh, awesome. Thank you for having me on, my friend. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, for those of you that don't know, Kevin is the voice of the Leatherneck football team. He broadcasts every single one of their home games every, well, almost every Saturday whenever they are home on the dog. Um, I will be putting his uh, all of his links to if you want to listen to his broadcasts down in the description below, as well as all of his social medias. All right, so Kevin, starting off today's interview, um, give us a little bit of a history with your, um, you know, with your love of sports, you know, your favorite teams, how you got into sports. You know, just give us a brief history about yourself, what you played. Well, I mean, growing up, I've played sports uh, pretty much all my life. I mean, I've started off obviously kind of like how last week ryan said you know the usual sports that you play around here uh, baseball soccer um basketball football um i even did a little bit of lacrosse too when i was like in first maybe second grade um yeah i mean i played all those sports going into going up until high school i mean i only played baseball and football um, but I mean, I've always loved sports. I'm a huge, huge Yankee fan, as, as you know. I'm oh, also yes. a huge Islander fan. Um, football, as we know, is a definite story. You know, I'm a uh, Cincinnati Bengals fan. That's because I used to like the Jets, but um, they ended up not re signing Chad Pennington or they traded him away. It was one or the other. And he was my favorite player at the time. And then shortly after that, Curtis Martin retired. And from that moment on, I, I, I swore him off. And I always liked the way that Chad Ochoacinco played. And also, growing up as a kid, I loved animals. I loved the way that the Bengals jerseys were. So I kind of just stuck with them. And I've been sticking with them since I was five, maybe six years old. Awesome. Not, yeah, maybe, well, not the best decision when it comes to the playoffs, obviously. Right. Um, but still, I, I'm happy with the, the choice. I definitely am happy with that. Awesome. Yeah, I, you've been a Bengals fan for as long as I've known you since, what, like first grade? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. All right. So another sport that I know you're big into is your soccer, your football yeah. for those fans. I know you're a huge Tottenham Spurs fan. I know that that's a big bond that you share with your dad as well. Um, yeah, they're huge, huge Tottenham supporters, 100%. All right. So I know one big thing is I, me and you have had many talks about this. You are a huge Yankee fan, but your dad happens to be a big Mets fan. How did that happen? So um, the way that that happens is I'm so I actually believe it or not. Yeah, sure. I, there was at one point where I was a Mets fan. There mm-hmm. is very, very rare footage of me in New York Ranger gear as well. Really? Um, yeah, those are the way in archives. Um, Wow. Reasons things come out. Um, but the reason being is my dad is on, my dad grew up a Mets fan, and um, my mother's side of the family, my grandfather, is a huge, huge Yankee fan. Growing up, grandma and grandpa used to watch me. So, what was always on? Yankee games. Hmm. That's how I became a Yankee fan. And I'm okay. not complaining. I'm not complaining. Hey, you got to see them win, well, technically two championships in your lifetime, but you know, me and you were both like, six months old when they won in 2000 yeah you know sorry for anybody who is older than us watching this we are young uh yeah, kind of, kind of black. <laughs> we're 2000 babies you're a broadcasting major at western illinois um sure. what drew you there because i know you were considering a bunch of different schools as long as i've known you you've always wanted to be a broadcaster what drew you there what was it about their program about their sports teams well, I guess really what it was, was I, first of all, <clears throat> I didn't know anything about this place um, prior to visiting. My dad found it, uh, found Western. And I was just like, you know what, I guess we can go visit. I mean, we're already going to Chicago anyways um, <clears throat> for a little bit of vacation. I, just, I might as well just, you know, enjoy it while I'm there. 
And I ended up meeting the tour guide who was a broadcasting major. Hmm. He was a huge Premier League fan, a Chelsea fan uh, for that matter. And he ended up becoming one of my future fraternity brothers of so Talk Kappa Epsilon. And touring the campus, I'm, I'm like, okay, this is this is a very nice, nice place. And also the the amount of opportunity that you get out here at Western as a broadcasting major, even as a freshman. Um, as you know, and many of you others know, I was uh, I've been on the campus radio station ever since I was a freshman. I was able to have like a sports radio show um, my freshman year, right right off the bat. And yep, I remember it was the uh, the East Coast West Coast show, right? Yes, yeah, sir. With uh, with Nate Clark, Nate Clark. Uh, yeah, that's another another time for <laughs> Nate. You know, he's a great kid. We'll just put it that way. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I mean, I, there were many schools that I was also looking at uh, that were giving me that you know, opportunity. First off, there weren't that many other schools that I was looking into, given that um, I'm, I'm, you know, I was lazy. I, I still can be lazy. And uh, my grades in high school, not have, who I was in high school, I might not have been the, the uh, sharpest tool in the shed, if you will. Hey, you still graduated, though. I remember when you went up on stage and I never heard anything louder at Island Trees than when you grabbed your diploma. Yeah, yeah, that was a big moment, very big moment. Um, but yeah, there weren't that many other schools giving me the opportunity. And Western, you know, fall, you know, fall in love with the campus and then actually being able to do what I love to do, was, it sold me. And, you know, I'm, I'm still here. You know, and now I'm the I'm the play-by-play radio voice of the football team, and I do it by myself. I'm living living my dream out here. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I remember when you told me that. I was so excited for you. Um, I, li- I was able to listen to that first game that you broadcasted. I know you broadcasted two so far. Um, you did a fantastic job that first game. Fortunately, I wasn't okay. able to listen to the second game. I was at my cousin's bar mitzvah, which you know I told you. But well, uh, when mm-hmm. when's the uh, the next game? So the next game, actually, um, I have the game notes right here. Um, I do know it's not this coming Saturday. Okay. It is the Saturday next, which will be, I believe, that is against um, Northern Iowa. This week we play uh, Southern Illinois. No, this week I believe is Illinois State. Okay. Or um, it's either Illinois State or um, – what was the other one you said? Southern Illinois? Correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's either one of those two. And then the game that I broadcast, which will be the following Saturday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time will be against Northern Iowa. And the beauty okay, about, awesome. you know, broadcasting these games is while, you know, Western might not be the best team right now, there are still a whole bunch of NFL caliber players that are on this team, Western, and on the opposing team as well. I cannot name one Division One or Division One play conference that is as competitive as Missouri play conference. All the teams that we play this year are ranked, and some of them are, you know, top ten schools, top five schools. Wow. I mean, in the – I believe there's usually 11 teams this year. I believe Indiana State opted out due to COVID. But usually there are eight teams that will be nationally ranked top 25 teams wow it, at the at the most sometimes right. yeah that's how competitive it is you got teams like north dakota state south dakota state north dakota and south dakota um, northern iowa as i mentioned southern illinois illinois state uh western's even been there a couple of times youngstown state uh, missouri state there's so many so many competitive teams it's it's really great football to see yeah, and speaking of the talent, I remember um, a player from Western had gotten drafted to the Chiefs the year they won the Super Bowl. Yes, um, that I, was Colin Saunders. Yeah, I, was, uh, I remember watching him get drafted. I remember seeing him play live. He was uh, nicknamed the Aaron Donald of the FCS. Like he is, re- he was tremendous athlete. And he got he got pretty famous off the social media, being on Adam Schefter's Twitter. Um, you know, this guy oh, wow. is six foot 300 pounds, and here he is at the combines doing backflips. He wow. was on Good Morning America or something. Really? Like that. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
gets drafted in the third round, you know, ended up getting, I believe it was 12, uh, 12 tackles out there, had one sack his rookie year. That nice. sack coming uh, against Aaron Rodgers, who is also a fraternity player of mine. Nice. And uh, ended up winning the Super Bowl. And obviously this year he got to the Super Bowl again and got to play against Tom Brady. It's pretty so, I mean, awesome. That is pretty awesome. I mean, two years in a row, go to this, I mean, first two years in the league, you know, you win the Super Bowl, you go to it again, and you get to play against Brady and one of them. And I just can't get any better your two years, first two years in the league. Oh, yeah, especially this year going down, you know, getting to play in what will go down as one of the greatest quarterback matchups of all time. You have mm-hmm. the greatest of all time, you know, debatable in Tom Brady going up against the future slash current superstar in Patrick Mahomes. It's a mm-hmm. matchup we won't forget about. He was able to be a part of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's a, you got a story. You're a part of history. Yeah. You're a part of history. Yeah. All right. So I know you, when you support a team, you go full force supporting that team, whether it is your, you know, your Western Illinois Leathernecks or it is your New York Yankees, your Tottenham Hotspurs, your Cincinnati Bengals, your New York Islanders. This is a Maybe question. Like Celtic in there as well. Celtic FC. Yes, Celtic FC. Those you know. old friend days get really, really rowdy. Surprised you're not wearing something to them today, considering it's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, you know, that's... Oh, fancy that, Jordan. I didn't, I didn't quite think, think of that. Well, <laughs> I, I honestly didn't think about that. I'll, I'll okay, wear something right. else. So, Actually, hold you. on. I do have, I do have a... Tie some yes, I do. I do have this uh nice little tie right nice. here. Nice, nice. Got a, a shamrock, so I guess I can wear that. Is that what? That's perfect. I actually have my Boston Celtics, different Celtic jersey off to the side right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question for you, the reason I listed up all those teams, a question I've had for you for a while. If you had to like put those teams in order of it. your favorite, what would that list be? I knew this was coming, Jordan, and this this is this is you know this is a conversation that I've had with myself, and I don't really even truly know the answer. I I'll get one thing straight here. One thing straight: the Yankees always come first, because the Yankees before anybody. Uh, this is itchy. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna take this off. Um, <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, the Yankees. First, no matter what, then I would probably say, given how long I've been for them and the history that they have, uh, I would have to say New York Islanders are two. And really? obviously, growing up, growing up, going to so many games. I mean, right. because I mean, let's face it, growing up, they weren't the best team in the league. There were some years that they were god awful. Right, but they were in our backyard. It was so easy and fun to go to their games. Exactly. Uh, cheap, you know, prices. So, I mean, you'd be able to go to so many games a year. And even be sometimes where with the school, like, do, like, Islander games. or like, I know they would do Long Island Ducks games, but there's a point. I remember middle school them doing, like, Islander games. I could be wrong on that, though. I think but, you're right. I, mean, I think you're right. Given how long that would given – how long I rooted for them, and just I mean, the amount of history that they have, I would say New York Islanders are number two, and then it would be it would be Cincinnati because I've been rooting for them almost as long as uh, the other two that I just mentioned, and the amount of heartbreak I've gone through yeah. with the team, um, obviously all the playoff losses, the one in particular. The Vontez Bird game. I had so many Steelers fans inside of my house. And I remember being in tears. Well, I remember being the last one in tears because Cincinnati had gone on and scored. And then they got the ball back. And Jeremy Hill fumbled the ball. Mm. And I knew right there the game was over. Cincinnati was going to blow it. What happens? Antonio Brown nearly died. And Pac-Man <laughs> Adam Jones just uh, lost his mind. And yep. I remember all the Steelers fans in my house on the verge of tears or in tears. And by the end of the game, I was the one in tears. Yeah. 
Then on top of that, seeing the, the Bengals lose to the Jets in the playoffs. Oh, that's uh, that got to be heartbreaking. That one hurt. I was in fourth grade for that. And what was worse about that was the week prior, it was week 17, I went to see the Jets uh, and the Bengals game. The Bengals came to Jersey and got shut out 37 nothing. It was neg- – Jordan, when I tell you the weather for that game was the weather that we get out here in Macomb, that's how bad it was. And I was like Ooh. 10 years old. It was brutal. It that's was miserable. Brutal. So, yeah, I'm at a heartbreak that I've been through with that team, put them at number three. And as, as much as I hate to do it, I have to put Spurs at number four, only also because I haven't really been the soccer guy for that long. Right. I've been I've been following it since I would say seventh grade, seventh or eighth grade, maybe. I didn't okay. get really big into I didn't really get big into it until you know that time. And um, you know, but Spurs were the team that I chose uh because of my dad. And um I can't really I can't really complain about it other than the fact that I have yet to see silverware, but I've seen some pretty cool uh sporting atmospheres and just some of the coolest sports moments that I've ever seen in my life. Just did reading you get, club. When you went to England, did you get to go see them play in a game? No, we did not. We, uh, when we went, we were in. It was in June, so that was ah, the okay. Um, and we didn't. We got to see the stadium, but we only got to see the outside of it because they were still doing like new renovations on the inside, which I hope to see one day. That stadium is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I would definitely one hundred percent want to go back to London. Awesome. I loved it there. Yeah, I did not expect you to rank Tottenham so low. And that's not a knock on you with Tottenham. Kevin is probably the biggest Tottenham Hotspurs fan that I will ever meet. Well, I'm sure there's some crazy fans, you know, overseas. But for me, who hasn't left the country yet, I'm hoping to soon, um, Kevin's probably the biggest fan of any, you know, European soccer team that I've ever met. So him putting them at four is not a knock on them. Yeah, that's that's just honestly, it's it's hard because it's really hard for me to to rank two, three, four. Yeah, can't because nobody will ever touch the Yankees. Nobody right. can. Right. Uh, not, even, not even Western could touch the Yankees. As as much as I as as much as I love my university, I'm I'm I've been brainwashed to be a Yankees fan, and I love it. I love it. Me and you, we throw we love to throw out just a random. Baseball player names as like Tanya Ryan, Sturtz, exactly like Tanya Sturtz. You know, as Ryan explained last episode of the interview, we call them you know our pants players. Yep. Um, I know one of your all-time favorite players would be considered in that you know that category by many people, Justin Bohr. Yeah, yeah, he really. I guess you could put him pants. I mean. He just got uh, a minor league contract with the San Francisco Giants not too long ago. So I did see uh, that actually. I was looking through my, uh, you know, getting ready for my fantasy baseball league, and I saw that he was back on, you know, being able to be drafted. And I was like, oh wow, Kevin must be really happy. Oh, you bet your bottom dollar I am. <laughs> I'm sure if he, when he makes the MLB roster, I will be purchasing a Justin Bohr jersey. I, I have yet to have anything Justin Bohr related other than a. Signed spring training ball, which I mean, his name is on it with a whole bunch of other people, right? Um, but yeah, uh, Justin Boy is definitely a pants player. I know you've been to a ton of sporting events in your lifetime, as have I, random, but we actually have never been to a sporting event together. But that's besides the point. We're gonna have to go to a game this summer, whether it's Ducks, Yankees, Mets, something, we're gonna have to make that happen. But mm-hmm. my question for you is. You've seen some crazy things at different sporting events, whether it's just sitting at a bar watching a, you know, a Spurs game or going to Yankee Stadium or going to the barn. What's one of your favorite sports memories that you have, whether it's something that you've witnessed at a game, something you've witnessed you know, just in general that has to do with sports, or even something that's happened with you in your sport playing career? Um, well... As I said earlier, the one team that has never failed to give a tremendous atmosphere when I'm watching, you know, that team is Spurs. Tottenham, when I go into the city and, you know, I go to Flannery's with my dad, those games get rowdy, Jordan. 
There is oh, sometimes, I, I've, and, I, and I I've seen your videos. This bar gets rowdy, and you know, for North London derby games, that being Tottenham versus their biggest rivals, Arsenal. Okay. There are hundreds of people in this bar. Wow. Chanting and singing till the final whistle blows on the 90th plus minute. And Jordan, it doesn't matter if the game is at six in the morning, which it has been. Yep. Or if it's, you know, afternoon kickoff or something like that. People are drinking like crazy. People are drinking like crazy. And even at six in the morning, absolutely wow. absurd. I've seen people get absolutely plastered at this stuff. <laughs> and they're here they are acting like at, at the bar, like, you know, they're in the grandstands of, you know, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, or White Hart That's Lane. Awesome. They're singing and chanting. It's, it's, you know, and when they score, Jordan, sometimes I'm afraid for myself because the floor will cave in. Some, <laughs> it feels like I'm caving in and shaking. It's, one, it's been some of the coolest atmospheres I've ever experienced. Um, definitely at Flannery's. And then there was the one time actually going to see them live at Red Bull Arena in Jersey when they played, a, I think it was a preseason tournament, they played against uh, AS Roma, oh, wow. uh, who are in the Italian league. Tottenham ended up blowing the game in the last few seconds. It was really cool because Tottenham was down 2-0, I think it was, and then they came back, scored one. We really couldn't see if that went in. And then the second goal went in, and we started celebrating like crazy. And then as like not even 30, 45 seconds later – Tottenham let up another goal, and that was the end of the game. In mm. pure, they they spurred it. They spurred it. <laughs> um, so I would say those are just some pretty interesting ones. The coolest Yankee at um, experience I have is Old Timers Day. Um, okay. I remember going to Old Timers Day. Um, it was Hideki Matsui's first ever uh, Old Timers Day, mm. and on his first at bat, he had a nuke into the right field upper deck really yes, it was really cool seeing him i mean seeing all the names of just all the legends of that uh, have come and gone and even some of the pants players tanyan sturtz was in attendance for that old timers game really yes he was i'll get like and they were andy they were, phillips was also there um they were scraping the bottom of the barrel for that oh yeah oh yeah uh when you have to st- uh, scrape for stump merrill uh, yeah you're scraping the bottom of the barrel <laughs> um, but just, I mean, obviously, and seeing all the widows of the uh, past legends like Thurman, uh, Thurman Munson, you know, Bobby Mercer, um, even Billy Martin, Phil Rizzuto. Oh, yeah, all I was about to say Rizzuto. Yeah, um, it was a really cool atmosphere. I remember they played the Angels too, so I got to see Trout. That oh, was nice. Also, that was also pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've got to see Trout play once. I got to sit with the seven line the last time they came and played in City Field. Mm-hmm. And he he's worth the hype. I've yeah. always believed oh, this. Yeah. But I remember it was it was a ball hit the center field. Jose Reyes was on second base and he was tagging up. And ball comes to Trout. Trout catches mm-hmm. it and in one motion grabs the ball and launches an absolute laser to third base in one motion. Dude didn't stop for anything. It was incredible and threw Reyes out by a mile. No, this was old Jose Reyes, so he wasn't what he used to be. But still, Jose Reyes is still a pretty fast guy even at the end of his career. And Trout oh, got yeah. by a mile from pretty deep in center field. Is honestly – at. will not be surprised if I end up calling him the greatest baseball player I've ever seen. Um, he's not up there yet, surprisingly. I know you're but, a big Ichiro guy, so I think Ichiro still ranks above him for you. Ichiro will always uh, still rank number one for me, yeah. Um, but Trout will probably be number one at some point. Yeah, for me right now, it's Trout, Ichiro, and Albert Pujols are my top three. That's very good top three. I mean, I would also throw – I would throw Cabrera – Miguel okay, Cabrera yep, yep, and over Mike Trout. Um, but obviously, and that's really, that's just because obviously the length of their careers uh, versus you right. know, Trout still playing and still being in the prime of his career. In high school, before you oh. got into your broadcasting career at Western, you would do the morning announcements and you would have a segment where you would do your fun fact of the day. 
Yeah, that was, uh, you know what? That became a fan favorite thing. I remember that starting after a football game after on a bus ride back. And I forget who it was. It was either Coach Mack or Christian Provenzano, one of the two. They said that I should do that on the morning announcements the, the next day we have school. Sure enough, I did it. And everybody, everybody laughed and came up to me like, dude, what was that? You're a goof. Like, you actually did it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll just, might as well just keep doing it. Everybody likes it. So it's going to make people laugh. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty popular, I would say. It was pretty, uh, a lot of people look forward to the morning announcements. You know, oh, I don't I, I, the only reason I paid attention to it. Yeah. You know, everybody would ask me, oh, what we got today? What Snapple top we got today? I'm like, you know, most of the time these aren't even Snapple tops. If I don't if I really can't find or think of anything, that's the thing. Most of the time I'm actually remembering. I'm knowing this stuff like I know some really obscure things. Why? I don't know. I, it's just who I am. But some of the things were you know out there some of the things were funny some of the things were like did he really just say that on the morning <laughs> announcements and then uh yeah some of them were snap the tops nice so do you have a fun fact of the day sports related for us right now um yeah i do kind of have a little bit of a fun fact of the day we were talking about in class yesterday, one of my uh, broadcasting and journalism 220 is a sports writing class. Um, for that, what we were doing, we were talking about Felix Hernandez's Cy Young Award year. Okay. And um, fun fact of the day, I pretty much gave the professor the stats of like his entire, like, you know, his win loss, strikeouts, walks, and whip. And I'm like, you can, you can check, you can back me up if, you know, if I'm wrong. People in the class, typed it up on their phones and like he got every single statistic right <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all because that's mm. happened multiple times when me and you were talking sports yeah i don't know how i still really don't know how i was able i'm able to do that i might be the most you know there's the most interesting man in the world i might be the most obscure man in the world because I can name, I can give you like you know baseball stats, football stats, but I can give you movie quotes like like crazy. Last time I ended off with a funny story about you know about Ryan. Okay. Uh, this time you end up with a funny story about you. So those okay. of you who know Kevin, you will definitely know this story, and I'll let Kevin elaborate on it a little bit more as to how this happened. Okay, I'm 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 kind of scared. <laughs> it's, Should I be scared? It's one of your more funny moments looking back, not necessarily bad. As far as I remember, this was, I want to say, ninth or 10th grade, and you were racing somebody in the gym. Oh, yeah, this is 10th grade. And I you got ran into the wall, breaking both of your arms. Yeah. Um, give me one second. I will show you something that I have. Yeah, you can continue with that story, though. Okay. So, legend goes, I actually wasn't there for this story, so I don't know, obviously, as well as Kevin, who was part of this story, but Kevin was racing somebody in the gym, and he turned on the Jets, finished the race, and went to go stop himself by putting his arms out and hitting into the wall, but he had his arms fully extended and ended up breaking both of his arms running into the wall. I'll throw up a picture of him with both of his slings. I have it. On. I have it right here, Jordan. It's okay. I made. I made oh, a flag. Okay. Of it. <laughs> he hit into a flag. I don't know if you can see, There's but him like, with his sling and his cast after he broke both of his arms running into the wall. Yeah, I've not the uh, the uh, most uh, fine moment I've ever had. Not the, the sharpest. Uh, no. Like I said, not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> but looking back on it, I mean, obviously it's a story. Everybody just, everybody laughs at that story. And um, that cast, I mean, I remember all that cast was just, every time I think about it, good times. It was a very good uh, time in my life. 
it, it's weird is like I, I it's weird how sometimes those things happen I once broke my ankle um, while I was working at my summer camp and that ended up being my favorite summer so I 100% get that as weird as it sounds so I had some of my best times while I was injured and I you know apparently you had the same with your with your arm yeah, the only thing I will say is it really sucked that, you know, people had seen that. So I couldn't give the excuse <laughs> of, like, I fell down the stairs. Because here I am in a sling and a cast. Yep. And I'm walking around like a complete, like, bozo. Just like, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you know what? I'm just going to be honest. I ran into a wall. Yep. And that's, yeah. And everybody, everybody knows that story. And every time, as like I'm looking at you right now, you have a huge smile on your face. Every time somebody hears that story, a smile comes to their face. I just came up with a new term for when you did that. That was your your Mike Baxter moment. Oh yeah, there in Johan Santana's no hitter. I remember where I was for that. I was at Caffit. I remember listening to that. Like, you know, bouncing back from the big gym and the little gym and the cafeteria. Uh, into like I guess it was the I guess the when you first walk into the middle school where you know I, I don't know I, I don't even know what it's called but you know what I mean yep yep I, I think it was just like the dad, main lobby or whatever it was into, yeah yeah yes yes the main lobby how did I okay yeah <laughs> the main lobby my dad was there listening to it on his phone with a couple of the other dads I specifically remember me and Ryan Kelly going back and forth and back and forth tuning into the game just to see, oh, is it still going on? Is it still going on? And sure enough, Johan Santana, I I remember I was where I was at Cafe. Yep. I was, at- I, was uh, I was at Unlimited Sports Action for my dad's 40th birthday. And my dad is a huge Mets fan. The reason I'm a Mets fan, I've explained that in a previous video. And mm-hmm. that was one of the coolest things ever. Awesome birthday present for my dad's 40th. I got a fun fact for you. Did you know that Marcus Stroman was actually in attendance in that game as a Mets fan? I did not know that. Yeah, he, um, this past that, Saturday was Johan's birthday, and Marcus Stroman posted a picture of him at that game. I mean, it makes sense. You know, he is a New York uh, native, Long Island native for that yep. matter. Um, but that's, that's a really cool, you know, especially now being on the team. You know, that's oh, something yeah. really cool. That's a really cool fact. That's something yeah. you would hear on a broadcast. Yep. That's why, yep. you know, I've always said, I've always said when I become big, I want you to be my statistician because you I find some incredible stats. Incredible. I, stats. I enjoy doing it. So I do it when I can. I'm going to have to make a video just throwing out some random things. For future Jordan, for all of you, making a future series, I'm going to make a uh, video. 10 random baseball facts that you did not know about. So thank you, Kevin, for that idea. <laughs> You're welcome. You know what? And if you need help on any of those uh, facts, uh, I can uh, surely lend a hand. Oh, I'll be reaching out to you for those for sure. I got you. All right. So that's it for today's interview. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kevin. I had a blast. Jordan, thank you. Any, any time. I, I hope I am allowed back on the channel. I hope I didn't do or say anything, uh, you know, too, too much. Um, oh, no, you'll, you'll be back for sure. You'll be back for sure. Don't worry. I, I will be, I'm honored. I'm honored, Jordan. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And remember, you can catch Kevin broadcast all of the home Western Illinois Leatherneck football games. I will put the link down to the app where you could listen to his broadcast down below in the description. Remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'll make some more videos. Got another video coming out this upcoming Tuesday. Um, hit that bell so you'll be notified whenever I make a new video. All of Kevin's social medias and every, everywhere you could reach out to him, if you want to call him, will be down in the description as well as all of my you know, links as well. Thank you again, Kevin. Thank you, everybody, for coming and checking us out, and peace. This is...